If f and g are functions whose graphs are shown, let u(x) equal f(g)(x), let v(x) equal g(f(x), and w(x) equal g(g)(x), and then find each derivative if it exists. If it does not exist, explain why. If an answer does not exist, then, then we would say does not exist. Okay, so here we want to take a look at the graph first. We know that here is, let's go ahead and draw and make sure that we can see our, x and y axis. So there is our x axis. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7. And then here we have our y axis. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. Okay. So here in part A, we want to find u prime of 1. Well, we know that u, prime, u of x is equal to f of g of x. Okay. So then what do we know about the derivative function? Well, the derivative is using the definition of that composite function, which means we'd have f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Okay, and so what we're trying to find is u prime of 1. So that means we're looking for f prime of g of 1 times g prime of 1. Okay, so we know that the function that's in blue represents the g function, and then the one in red represents the f function. Okay, so what we want to do is to find g of 1, we need to figure out what is the output. So here, to find g of 1, here's where x is 1. And then you can see here that the output represents 3. So therefore, we would say the following. We would say that f prime of 3 times g prime of 1. So now what we want to do is we want to find f prime of 3 and g prime of 1. That means we want to figure out what is the slope of the tangent line of f at when the value of x is 3. So if this x is 3, then that tells us that we're looking at this linear line here. So we need to find the slope of this line. So the point here represents 2, 4. And then the, the, the value here, instead of this one over here, because we can get an exact point here, represents 6 and then 3. So we're going to find the slope of that line. So we know that the slope, okay, is y, uh, y1, y2 minus y1. So if we take y2, which is 3, subtract y1, which is 4, and then we're going to divide that by x1, which is 6, minus x2, which is 2. Okay, so that is the slope of the function f at 3. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to find what is the slope at g 
when x is 1, meaning g prime of 1. So when it's 1, we need to look at that function that's in blue, so the linear function. So here, you can see here is the linear function. So we want to find the slope of that line. Well, we can see here that that point here represents 0, 6. And this point here represents 2, 0. Okay, so if we want to find the slope of that line, then we would do the following. It's going to be y1 or y2, which is 0, minus y1, which is 6, divided by 2 minus 0. Now we can go ahead and then determine what that point is. So we get 3 minus 4, so that's going to be negative 1 over 4 times we have negative 6 over 2. So therefore we get a positive. We know that this 4 2 goes into 4 2 times here, 2 goes into 6 3 times, so we end up with positive 3 fourths. So therefore, u of 1 is going to equal 3 fourths. Okay, now let's try the next one here. We want to find part b where it is v prime of 1. So let's take a look at v prime of 1. Well, we know that first v of x in our problem is equal to g of f of x. So the derivative would be v prime of x, which would equal g prime of f of x times f prime of x. So what we're looking for is the following. We want v prime for when x is 1. So we're going to get g prime of f of 1 times f prime of 1. Okay, so let's first find f of 1. So if we find f of 1, we know that f is in red. So when x is 1, the output is 2. So we can see here that the output is 2. So therefore, this is going to be g prime of 2 times f prime of 1. Okay. So we need to find g prime of 2. Well, let's take a look at g prime of 2. Well, at g prime of 2, what do we notice here? We notice that there is a corner, and therefore it does not exist. So we would say that it does not exist since g prime of 2 does not exist. Okay, next we want to find w prime of 1. So let's write our definition out. So the first definition is w of x, which is equal to, in the question, g of g of x. So therefore, if we wanted to write this out in terms of the definition of w prime of x, then we would have g prime of g of x times g prime of x. And so we want to find out when w prime of 1 is going to equal g prime of g of 1 
times g prime of 1. So first, let's find g prime or g of 1 here. So if we go up here, we know that the function g is in blue, so the output is 3. So we know that we get g prime of 3 times g prime of 1. Okay. So we got to find g prime of 3. So where is g prime of 3? Well, if we take a look at g prime of 3, okay, here's the value of 3, and it's going to be in between these numbers here. So if this is g3, so we know that we have the coordinates 2, 0, and then a coordinate over here, which represents 5, 2. So let's find the slope of that. So to find the slope of that, we're going to take y2 and subtract y1. So that's going to be 2 minus 0 over x2 minus x1 times, now we have g prime of 1. So g prime of 1 is going to have a point of 2, 0, and we know that it has 6, 0. So let's go ahead and find that slope. So, sorry, not 0, 6. That. So that's 0, 6. So we know that y2 is 6 minus y1 is 0 x2 is 0 minus x1, which is 2. So now let's go ahead and then calculate that. So we have 2 thirds times 6 over negative 2. So this is, that becomes 1, this becomes negative 1, and then we know 6 divided by 3 is 2, so we get negative 2. So therefore, w prime of 1 is going to equal negative 2.